Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I want to welcome you to Elkton United Methodist Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Eric, and it is just so good to be with you here uh, this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. We have a little respite from all the uh, craziness of the heat this past week, so I hope that you're able to enjoy this Sunday and enjoy the cooler temperatures as well. Um, because today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, today we are also fortunate. Uh, we are going to be celebrating a baptism. Um, of course, in our celebration of holy baptism, we celebrate the fact that we were chosen by God before we ever knew God. Uh, God has loved us and sought after us, uh, God has proclaimed uh, the good news that God accepts us just as we are. Even when we're broken and messed up and struggling, God is there seeking after us. And so when we choose God, heaven rejoices. And today, Aiden, who is 12 years old and is really excited to be baptized, uh, he will be publicly professing that he has chosen God. And so we will rejoice with heaven today as we celebrate his baptism together. Um, I want to invite you now, though, to prepare your hearts for worship. Would you please pray with me silently as we uh, prepare our hearts uh, to lift our voices to God? Call to those able, would you please stand for the call to worship? We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ, members of God's family. We are brothers and sisters to one another. There are no outsiders here among us. No one has any special standing or bragging rights. For we have been brought together by the redeeming love. Let us join together in worship.
Do we really want God to dwell within us? Or are we only willing to rent out space for a brief visit? Our actions, our words, our silence, our fears all show the presence or absence of God's in our lives. Let us empty ourselves of all which burdens us and welcome the one who lives with us forever. Please join me as we pray. Steadfast God, we confess that we are so busy putting up walls between ourselves and others, we cannot see the home you are building for all of us. We run to welcome those who look, talk, and act like us, and you throw open. Forgive us, loving God. By your grace, help us to see the household you are building for all people. Even the smallest child is welcome to sit at your table and be fed by your grace. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our peace, our hope, our Lord, our Savior. In Christ you have been brought home living in God's household of hope and peace. God's covenant with us is everlasting. God's steadfast love is forever. God's forgiveness makes us new and whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, we are fortunate today, as I said before, to be celebrating a baptism. Um, I had Aiden come to me and just express that desire to be baptized, and that's a wonderful thing when someone makes that choice for themselves, too. And it's so enjoyable uh, to baptize a young person into the life of the church and to see their passion uh, for God. We had a wonderful meeting together with the family and Aiden, and we got to talk about our faith and uh, everything else that God is doing in our lives, and so I'm just grateful that Aiden is here today, so I do want to invite Aiden and those who are sponsoring him to come forward. And Aiden, I'm going to have you stand right here so that I can reach over and cover you in water, all right? We're going to get you wet today. You've got plenty of hair for us to be, to be able to soak you too, so. And Feel free, as the congregation follow along, there's an insert in your bulletin. And also, we are going to be utilizing uh, page number 36 in your hymnal as well. So if you want to go ahead and begin turning to page 36, you're more than welcome to. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of holy baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we're given new birth through water and the Spirit. We present Aiden Wynn Lee for holy baptism today. And Aiden, I've got a few questions for you. I know we talked about these questions together. But on the behalf of the whole church, we ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil and justice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, Will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative to the world? And now you all, as the body of Christ, have a responsibility too. A, a part of our celebration of baptism is the fact that we're all in this together. We are the family of God together. And so we also vow to support and guide Aiden in his journey to faith. So do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. 
Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this family with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And now I invite you to join me in the Apostles' Creed as printed in the insert in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now is when you can join me on page 36 in your hymnal. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. And he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. And he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all the nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. So pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and all who receive it to wash away the, their sins, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with you and the Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. So, Aiden, we're going to baptize you now. And you know the commitment that this is. We've talked about it, and we are so grateful for you in the life of our church and the example that you are to your friends and your family and all of the people who are here. So, are you ready to get a little wet? All right, here we go. Aiden Winley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I do want to invite you all to come forward and lay hands on Aiden. And we're going to pray over him. <laughs> Aiden, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, man, we're proud of you, buddy. We're proud of you. Now, it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, we commend this family to you, to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, 
We renew our, renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our witness, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Paul. A couple of weeks ago, we celebrated an anniversary in our country. You might have remembered. Big fireworks and all that. 245th anniversary of our nation's uh, start. But we overlooked another anniversary. The first anniversary of Pastor Eric joining us here at Elkton United Methodist. Let's give him a belayed anniversary. <laughs> I think I just excuse, uh, excuse the word or mix the words delayed and belated, but you know what I meant. <laughs> today's New Testament reading is the primary text for Pastor Eric's uh, sermon today, so listen closely in case there's a quiz. Paul writes to the folks at Ephesus, chapter 2, starting at verse 11. 
So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he may create in himself one new humanity in place of the two thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to you who were near. For, though, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Paul and I both checked Wikipedia after the first service. 1967, Edward and Hawkins Singers were revising a 1755 song. So how's that for a flashback here on a Sunday morning? Our New Testament reading and gospel reading is from Mark, and it's good news worth standing for if you are able. Would you please stand? Reading from Mark chapter 6, starting at verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of him. And as he went on, port, went on shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to preach there many things. Continuing at verse 53, when, the, when they had crossed over, they came to a land in Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about at the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was preaching. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So I remember recently being with some friends, we were out to eat, and I think we were annoying some of the other people dining near to us because we kept bursting out laughing from the time from time to time. Yeah, we were we were those people. And uh, we were telling stories to each other of all the stupid things we did as kids growing up. And trust me, there were plenty of those stories to go around and none of which will be uttered here this morning. Um, but anyways, it, it's strange to think, though, that those friends who I am now so close with, who I feel like I've known forever, that it wasn't too long ago, just several years ago, that we were strangers, and we didn't know one another at all. And, and we might look around at our neighborhoods, and, and we might feel the same way about the people who live next door to us. Once strangers, they are now people who have lent us their tools, who have played with our children, uh, who have shoveled the snow from our driveways and our sidewalks, people who we care about and who care about us. And we recognize, too, that the people in the pews next to you, that, that they were once strangers to you. However, they're now the people who have prayed with you and struggled with you and worked with you on missions projects, or maybe even fought with you when it came to making a major decision in the church. We've had plenty of that too, right? But the reality is I've already come to know so many of you as if I've known you for years and years, and it's only been a year. I, I've fallen in love with my community here, and it feels like it's always been home to me because I have so many new friends. And there are all these people in our community, in our lives, and around us who we have learned to love, who we have come to care about. And we enjoy one another, and we live with one another in relative peace. In the scriptures, Paul says, we are now brought near by the blood of Christ. 
He is our peace. Though we were once strangers, we are not now together. We are now one in Christ. And the gospel has that power to bring people together. The gospel breaks down barriers that, that once divided us. Uh, in our text today, we see ethnic and religious walls brought down, forming a new beloved community of Jews and Gentiles who can live in peace and unity now. And despite centuries of conflict between Jews and Gentiles, somehow the Ephesians are learning to love one another, to do ministry together, and to be followers of Jesus Christ together. Somehow they've overcome centuries uh, of division, centuries of hatred and anger and strife. And folks, yes, it was hard work for the Ephesians to come together as the church. Culturally, the Jewish people and the non-Jewish people had many, many differences. From the foods that they were able to eat to the languages they spoke, the entertainment they enjoyed, and even the understanding of, their understanding of morality was vastly different. However, not without challenges along the way, of course, uh, they were able to overcome these differences. And their differences paled in comparison to the most important thing, which was the good news of the gospel. The chief cornerstone of their lives, Jesus Christ, was more important than any of the divisions that separated them. He was their unifying factor in coming together. And the church in Ephesus existed as a testimony to Christ's unifying power um, as Jews and Gentiles were successful in their ministry. And there are things that unify us that are much more important than those things that divide us. You know, living together in community with people who are different from us is much more valuable than allowing our differences to keep us from living at peace with our neighbors. Friends, this is especially true today when it seems we are caught up in every political controversy. Every difference in opinion is magnified and oftentimes causes harm in our relationship with those with whom we do not see eye to eye. If you do not agree with me on one thing, then you must be against me. That seems to be today's mantra. And yet, in the scriptures here, in Ephesians, we see hope. And we see hope among us. We still love our friends and our neighbors and our family. We oftentimes choose not to discuss politics or religion with them because we want to keep the peace, don't we? And we know that those subjects are controversial and can cause strife. Our hearts beat for peace, and we know it's difficult, but it's worth it. You see, the, the gospel breaks through the nonsense to remind us that we are all people of sacred worth. We are all sinners in need of saving, and Christ died for all of us to save us. And we were all loved by God before uh, we ever loved God. And so these truths, they're more important truths than any of the truths that divide us. They're truths that taught the Ephesians to accept one another even if they couldn't agree on every issue. And yeah, the early Christians had some arguments on whether or not it was sinful to eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols, even Paul and Peter got into a very public argument in Antioch, and they debate amongst themselves about many political and religious issues that were the hot topics of their days, too. And so we know that, yes, they struggled, too, at times. Um, however, we can see that it, more often than not, Christ prevailed in their hearts, and because Christ prevailed in their hearts, peace prevailed among them. And the peace of Christ is that Jesus reminds us of who he is and who we are. Jesus reminds us of who he is and who we are. And Christ reminds us that we're not strangers. We're not aliens. No, we are in fact family. We have been welcomed into the household of God. And the creator of the universe has welcomed us into this beloved community. In church, you might remember back in the day when we used to share the peace of Christ, you know, before COVID changed some of our practices. 
and we would go to our pew neighbor, shake their hand, maybe even offer a hug and say, peace be with you. It's like when Jesus showed up when the disciples were scared and they had locked themselves in the house, in the upper room, and Jesus had died, he had been crucified, and they feared that the same people who crucified Christ would come after them next. But the resurrected Christ miraculously appeared to them, and when he appeared in their midst, he said, peace be with you, my peace I give to you. And he was reminding them that everything was going to be okay. Uh, that no matter what happened to them, he'd always be with them. No matter how difficult things got, he loved them. That's the peace of Christ. That's what Paul is talking about here in Ephesians when he talks about the peace of Christ. And we too must allow Christ to prevail among us and share, and we must also share that good news, that peace with others, that Christ loves them, that Christ wants to be near to them, that Christ will never leave them. We live in a divided world that is ravaged by hatred and animosity and anger. We see it every day. And from what presidential candidate we support to how we feel about these hot uh, political issues, it, it's easy to find our differences and emphasize those. But Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 12, 18, he says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all people. And, and so we must remember and proclaim the good news of the gospel that everyone is invited to be a part of the family of God even those with whom we disagree. And, and you know, I have some pretty close friends who believe very differently than I do when it comes to politics. And in order to remain at peace with one another, we do approach our conversations and our debates very carefully. We try to remember that each of us has good intentions. We know that we each have pretty good arguments. These arguments have existed for decades, and there's reasons they have. It's because they're oftentimes good at arguments. And so we know it's hard to change our beliefs, but we're intentional about listening to one another nonetheless. And this keeps the pot from boiling over in anger and us losing control in our conversations. It helps to remember that each of us is of sacred worth to God, that each of us is a beloved creation, that each of us is uh, highly loved. And so in almost every case, these rare but carefully executed conversations result in better friendships, even if our positions do not change, even if we continue to dis disagree on these topics, our friendship grows despite our differences. And this is advice for us all in our conversations with people to recognize that people are trying to do what they think is best. Even if we think they're misguided, even if we disagree, we need to love people as God loves folks. And I think we too must proceed with great care and take seriously Paul's encouragement to live at peace with one another. We know how sensitive the situation is right now. One loose remark can set someone off. Uh, con conversations can escalate quickly into arguments. Uh, with social media, insults and inflammatory news can spread like wildfire. One post on Facebook that isn't carefully thought out can cause a maelstrom of anger. And so we must proceed cautiously and with love. Christ is the cornerstone of our lives, and his message of peace is more important than that which divides us. So working hard on our conversations and treading lightly and listening with love, it, it's worth the work if it allows the peace of Christ to prevail. So I encourage you to work hard for the message of God's love and the peace of Christ to prevail. Speak peace wherever you go. Live in peace with one another. And may Christ be the chief cornerstone of your life and give you peace. Amen.
I'm going to invite you to stand with me as we sing hymn number 357, Just As I Am Without One Plea. As we prepare for our morning prayer, I have sad news to add to your prayer list, and that is the death of Roger McCardle, son of Nancy, and the death of James Spellman. We will remember them in our prayer, and we ask you to pray for their families beyond today. Father, hear us as we pray. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ as members of God's family and brothers and sisters to one another. There are no outsiders here among us, for we have been brought together by the redeeming love of Jesus. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, 
who is above all and through all and in all, take this patchwork, a collection of persons, and quilt together your church. Like old pieces of cloth, take these words and songs and prayers, take our thoughts and inner hungers, and join them all together into a new and living fabric, the purpose of which is to cover and color your world with grace and love. God, we are aliens and travelers in this world, but you invite us to be your guests. You lavishly offer us your hospitality and lovingly welcome us into your family. You invite us to share in the abundance of your kingdom. God, you have shown us that providing hospitality to strangers opens a doorway into the kingdom of God. Remind us that when we offer hospitality to others, we are receiving Christ into our midst and so fulfilling the law of love. Now, Father, today we pray for those in our congregation and our extended circle of friends and family who have special needs. We lift the families of Roger McArdle and James Spellman, but you already know who is grieving, who is ill, who is lonely, who is afraid and who is stressed by caring for others. Help them face their trials and empower us to help them as well in your name. And now we raise our voices in unison, offering the prayer taught to us by your son, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I praise God that we can cast all our prayers upon him. And now, though, I want to be able to share with you some announcements in the life of the church for the good of the church. Um, note, we do have a bulletin insert that has some of the announcements, and it also has the prayer list. So take it home with you as a reminder of events and as a reminder to pray for those in our community who need your prayers. I also want to thank you for your tithes and your offerings. Uh, you can continue to give through our church website or by sending your offering into the church office. We also have an offering plate uh, at the back of the sanctuary. Uh, um, as you leave today, you are more than welcome to put your gift there uh, if you haven't already. Um, there's also a Wednesday communion service that's held at 6.15 p.m. on the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month, and all are welcome to attend that service. And, uh, just a reminder, John Wesley did tell us, celebrate Holy Communion as often as you can. So I encourage you to come out for that service, too. Um, the office is closed tomorrow, uh, but will be open this week, Tuesday through Friday, from 9 a.m. to noontime. And our secretary, Beth, is on vacation, much needed. Uh, so if you call this week expecting her wonderful voice, uh, you're going to be stuck with mine instead. So... Uh, but I will try my best to meet your needs, uh, and I'll be there in the office for you if you need anything. And don't hesitate to stop by and say hi to your pastor, too. I'd love to see you. Um, there is a memorial service this coming Saturday, July the 24th, at 2 p.m. for our beloved Ruth Dibert. Um, now, the family will be available for an informal visitation prior to the service, 
so it's okay to arrive a little early if you want to express your condolences to the family. Also, there will be a reception following the service with finger foods and uh, some refreshments and just a time of fellowship and all the pictures will be set up there in the fellowship hall. Um, so I encourage you to stay for that and to uh, spend some time with the family. They, they need you. They, they need you to be there for them. So I encourage you to be there for them. Also, uh, the Spirit Lake Mission team is preparing for its mission trip, which will uh, be the first week in August. Uh, be praying for the whole team. Uh, there is also a display in the hospitality area with info about how you can support the missions team. Um, along with that, I'm going on that missions trip. I'm excited about it. Uh, but we are going to be pushing our celebration of Holy Communion uh, that month, uh, the month of August, back to the second Sunday of August, since I'll be out of town. I'll be back the second Sunday in August, so we'll celebrate Holy Communion together then. Uh, also, Vacation Bible School is happening this year, and it will run from August uh, 8th through the 12th from 6 to 8 p.m., and if you would like to be a part of that, reach out to Katie Sparks. Also, uh, reach out and uh, register anyone that you know in the community who might benefit, any of the children that you know, uh, who might benefit from uh, being a part of VBS this year. Registrations are available on our Facebook page, on our website, or you can call into the church office and we'll help you get registered. Um, our nursery is also always open for both worship services, so if you know of any families that are in need of a nursery, uh, let them know that uh, we have some caring individuals who take care of our nursery uh, for those who need it. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to begin meeting with parents uh, to have conversations about the future of the youth ministry program, uh, parents and youth, to have conversations about the youth ministry program here at our church. Um, please reach out to me if you would like to be a part of that conversation. Uh, we don't want anyone to be left out of that conversation because we know how important the youth ministry is here. And so you can find my email in the bulletin insert that's in the bulletin if you want to let me know that I make sure I contact you uh, when we have those meetings. Um, we do have the attendance books back in the pews, so if you could take the time to write your name in them and pass them down uh, your row, that, that would just be a big help to us as well. Um, anyways, I think that's all the announcements that I have for you today. Let's close out our time of worship this morning as we sing the beautiful hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns, number 327 in your hymn.
We leave this place no longer strangers, but members of God's own family, brothers and sisters through the blood of Jesus Christ. Together, we're being built into a holy dwelling place where God lives by the Spirit. So go out with joy and confidence to love and serve the world, for we do not go alone. Amen. Thank you.